Like I was groundbreaking. They disincluded. Like I need to be represented. I was like, oh my God. Welcome back to the comment section. I'm Brett Cooper. So the new Mario movie came out at the beginning of this month with Chris Pratt and Jack Black. And the success has been absolutely wild. And I have to be totally transparent. I knew it was coming out eventually because when Chris Pratt was originally cast, you know, that made huge waves. Everybody was talking about it. But this really was not a film that I had on my radar or paid much attention to. You guys saw me play the Mario video games. Ah! Oh. I'm so bad. Obviously, I have had no connection to Mario in my life, so this was not something that I was like waiting around for and really was not thinking about. And that was a mistake. I'm willing to admit when I am wrong because I should have been paying attention to this film. But before we get into this story, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you've not already, ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section or off the clock episode. Alrighty, so in the two weeks since it's released, the Super Mario Bros. movie has consistently been breaking records. Just look at this headline from yesterday morning. This is from Hollywood Reporter. Let's go! Super Mario Bros. movie gets ready to join $1 million box office club. The animated movie made more movie history in scoring the seventh biggest second weekend of all time domestically behind the live action juggernauts, including Star Wars, The Force Awakens, Avengers Endgame, and Jurassic World. I mean, like Star Wars, guys. This like little Mario movie is competing with Star Wars. I did not even think that it would possibly be up there. You thought wrong. And I'm apologizing to you all for not having my head in the game on this Hollywood entertainment stuff. I think I need to play more of those video games, apparently. Now, after the wildly successful first weekend, which made it the biggest animated global weekend of all time, like Beat Frozen 2, which was apparently the biggest one yet, Universal estimated that it would bring in $87 million in the second weekend. And that was wrong. It ended up bringing in a whopping $92.5 million in that second weekend, which makes it the seventh highest grossing second weekend of all time for Mario. <laughs> Like, I didn't know that the seventh highest grossing second weekend was something to be really excited about, but like, this Italian plumber is just crushing it. So we, we should all be really excited for him. Hollywood Reporter also said that overseas, the returns are remarkable. The PG pick crossed 700 million worldwide ticket sales on Monday after finishing Sunday with a foreign haul of $339.8 million and 3,053.3 million, .3 million domestically for a 12 day global tally of $693.1 million through Sunday. And it hasn't even hit Japan yet, which is one of the biggest film markets. So when it hits Japan, I mean, they are expecting that it is going to blow past that $1 billion mark. And there are only a few films, especially animated films, who have made it past a billion dollars, especially like this soon after coming out. And there are many reasons for the success of this film. People are debating it online, specifically liberals and conservatives are going back and forth on social media, trying to own the film and arguing over whether it's woke or anti-woke. It's kind of ridiculous, but I'm enjoying it. Like, look at these two YouTube videos that were right on top of each other. Insufferable girl boss, Super Mario's bro review, Peach is a girl boss, Bowser is a simp, and Mario is a punching bag. And then Mario just wrecked Disney. Get Super Mario Bros just destroyed the woke Disney at the box office. Families are done with Disney. And then Charlie Kirk got involved and he was saying like, Nintendo refused to let Mario Bros go woke. And most of the people who did think that it went woke or that it was some kind of like progressive win were claiming that because Princess Peach was apparently a girl boss and Mario was being a simp because he saved her, which just seems like a weird argument. Like Mario goes woke, Mario gone woke, too much girl boss, insufferable girl boss. And then there was a one second scene where a male character dressed up as Peach and the left is literally trying to claim that that is drag and that that's a win for them. There's literally an article being like, look, we won. The alt-right is trying to claim this movie. There was a drag scene. Literally, it was not drag. Jump to conclusions. Like this person tweeted and said, so the movie that the far right didn't about face on and declared an anti-woke victory has a full on drag scene in it. You can't make this shit up. Caleb is literally sitting behind the camera right now. He took his kids to see this film and he's saying that this scene was actually like the butt of the joke. If anything, they were making fun of drag. So take that as you will. It's not a full on drag scene and you know it, calm down. And I actually like that people are kind of going back and forth on this because that makes it seem like the film is relatively normal, which is how it should be. Neither side can claim it. It's entertainment. You're supposed to go and enjoy it, not be like, this is a win for me. Now, calm down. It's an animated Mario movie. The quartering actually had a really solid take on this. The Mario movie was not woke. It was not anti-woke. It was just a movie. Much in the way Top Gun Maverick was also a movie. It will also make a boatload of cash. That is what is in demand. The culture war has skewed us all to always be on the lookout, but this time it's nothing. And it's in demand because people just want a break. And that's a good thing. We deserve a break. 
We all deserve a chance to escape. That's why I'm excited about the Barbie movie. Maybe it'll end up being woke once I get there, but in the trailer, it just seems like like a good time, which is what audiences deserve and what they need. It's a feel-good, age-appropriate movie that parents can comfortably and happily take their kids to, and adults who grew up playing the OG games are having fun seeing the film for nostalgia's sake. Like, it, it's great. There is one person, though, who is desperate to make this film political, like more than anybody else on Twitter. <laughs> His name is John Leguizamo, and he played Luigi in the first Super Mario Bros. movie back in 1993. And he's not happy that his film and his franchise has been whitewashed. In fact, he is boycotting the film. Here's a Variety article from a couple weeks ago. Former Luigi actor John Leguizamo says hell no to watching Super Mario Bros. movie due to casting. They messed up the inclusion. Like, did they though? Did they mess anything up? I think they are doing just fine. I don't think they need your boycott. I don't think they're going to feel your boycott in the slightest. He said, no, I will not be watching. They could have included a Latin character. Like I was groundbreaking and then they stopped the groundbreaking. They messed up the inclusion. They disincluded. Just cast some Latin folk. We're 20% of the population, the largest people of color group and we are underrepresented. That like, that's a real quote. What are you talking about? I was groundbreaking? Oh my God. Okay, you're saying the quiet part out loud. You're insecure, you're upset, and you're projecting and trying to gain relevancy by making a progressive political point. Shut up. Like, respectively, zip it. Who the f do you think you are? Does he know that Mario is Italian? Because I only learned that a couple of months ago. So maybe he's a bit confused. I'll give you, <laughs> I'll throw you that bone. Like, if any race should be having a conversation about this movie, it should be the Italians. So sit down, let them talk if they want to. You're so desperate to be relevant because people aren't talking about you anymore and this film is crushing when your Mario film was a colossal failure, literally. And I don't mean to be harsh, that's just the truth. Released on May 28th, 1993, Super Mario Bros. was a critical and commercial failure, grossing 38.9 million worldwide against a budget of 42 to 48 million. It received generally negative reviews from critics who criticized the plot, inconsistent tone, and lack of faithfulness to the source material, but praised the special effects, artistic direction, and cast performances. This movie is literally on the worst movies ever made list. It has a cult following though, so you got that. But like, this is not about you actually wanting diversity and inclusion, this is about you being Bitter. I'm putting on my psychology hat right here because it's so obvious. So please, John, deal with your own anger and your insecurities privately and stop trying to make them into a relevant political statement. It only makes you look bad. How do I say this? Leguzama? Mo, oh, Mo, sorry. Leguzamo. His name is John Leguzamo. Leguzamo. <laughs> I just really want to say, I want, I want to make him Italian. He's in the Italian movie. I'm trying to make him Italian. Leguzamo. His name is John Leguzamo, and he played Mario in the first Super Mario's Berlula. Oh, never mind. Luigi. I don't think my brain is computing that, Caleb. Leguzamo. All right. Thank you for watching the comment section. If you want to see more videos just like this, make sure to subscribe to this channel, turn on your notifications, like this video, and of course, if you want even more content, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I'm Brett Cooper. See you next time.